How sweet it was. An undefeated season, a second consecutive win, and a share of the national championship. Can the dogs would again? What's the potential for another national championship and a record-breaking third consecutive Rose Bowl? And how does success on the field translate into cash on the barrelhead? And there's another kind of football making news. The men's and women's soccer teams are gearing up for their most challenging seasons ever. All that and more as we kick off a new season of Husky Profile coming up next on Prime Sports Northwest. First of the 1992 fall, winter, winter of 93, Husky Profile, a new edition. And remember this picture, folks. Remember real well, come about November and the end of football season, a sun-drenched 75-degree day on the shores of Lake Washington. Hi again, everybody. Don Foyer along with Chuck Nelson, beginning our third year of bringing you Husky Profile, as well as play-by on the delay delayed telecast of Husky football. Gee. It's our third year. We're getting old. Not bad. <laughs> we've been very successful since we've been here, though, both on the field and off. The Husky football team, of course, in the two years that we've been here, 22-2. Uh, and two. We feel like we're doing our part. Well, I think Don James has finally discovered that probably this has been one of the keys for the success the last two years <laughs> are the announcers. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we've got a lot going on this season and a new show. As you can see, we have an hour show now that will be coming out every month. Husky Profile, covering the athletic department at the University of Washington. And as the fall season nears, all eyes, of course, are on the Huskies, and all pens as well. So we have something new, a look at some of the recent headlines from the Seattle Times and the post Intelligencer. Headlines like, a panel of 31 writers and broadcasters at the Pac-10 Conference's Media Day predicted the Huskies would win the Pac-10 championship in 92. For the first time since Coach James has been at Washington, the university is sold out of season football tickets. Jason Shelley, a freshman participating in his first scrimmage with the Huskies, caught five passes for 122 yards and two touchdowns. Shelley is 6'2", 180 pounds from Vallejo, California. Bob McDonald resigned as baseball coach to accept a similar position at the Naval Academy. McDonald has been with Washington for 16 years and last season guided the Huskies to their first NCAA tournament since 1959. Seems like deja vu, doesn't it, folks? The Hurricanes and Huskies, who finished 1-2 in last year's Associated Press College Bowl, are starting the 92 season the same way. Miami received 1,511 points, and Washington received 1,453 votes in the AP preseason survey. According to an NCAA study examining the scholastic progress of college athletes, Washington graduates only 33% of its football players. Coach James disputes how the NCAA determines graduation rates, but has taken this problem very seriously, stepping up the emphasis on graduation rates using several methods. Like we said, lots going on. That's it for Husky Highlights this month. We'll have many more for you next month and the month after as the entire athletic season goes on through fall and through the winter. So, we've got a lot to cover here in the next hour as we're on the outskirts of Husky Stadium. The team will be coming out on the practice field behind us on the natural turf in their afternoon session. Probably get to see some of that. We've got a lot coming up, so be sure and stay with us here on Husky Profile. The talk of free feet is already in the air as the Huskies make a high and mighty debut in the free season poll. And who could resist a look back at the season that did it all? All coming up next on Husky Profile. Touchdown in Seattle on Horizon Air, offering you Seahawks weekend packages, including airfare, lodging, and tickets for as low as $207. And between now and October 15th, Horizon and Prime Sports Northwest are offering you a chance to come see the Hawks free. Enter to win a grand prize trip for two to Seattle, including an overnight stay at the luxurious Embassy Suites. To enter, send your name, address, and telephone number to Prime Sports Northwest, care of Seahawk Trip, 18 West Mercer Street, Seattle, Washington, 98119. His life has prepared him to turn the U.S. Senate into a place of action and purpose. Rod Chandler, the son of a farmer, devout husband and father, 
small businessman, out front on our most urgent concerns. In the last 10 years, 44 times I voted for across-the-board spending cuts, reduce cost while maintaining quality. Your government is turning its back on you, and that has got to change. He stands out because he stands up for change. Rod Chandler for U.S. Senate. Have you ever dreamed of having box seats for baseball's greatest moments? Have you ever dreamed of sharing the moments that will shine throughout history or hearing the crowd roar? Well, dreams do come true. Major League Baseball Home Video presents baseball's greatest moments. To order for 1995, call 1-800-543-6200. That's 1-800-543-6200. Baseball's passion and majesty. The heroes and memories are all in this home video. From the legends of yesterday to the superstars of today, this amazing video overflows with greatness. To order for 1995 plus $4 shipping and handling, call 1-800-543-6200. Visa and MasterCard orders only, or send check or money order to this address. Husky Profile is brought to you by new Rainier Ice Lager Draft and Rainier Ice Lager Draft Light and by Dairy Queen. We treat you right. And right now, Chuck Nelson and I are sitting about halfway up Husky Stadium looking out the open end and behind us. And you'll see them starting to show up now. Some very tired Husky football players entering their second week of two-a-days. But we've got lots coming up. And, of course, September 5th, it all begins. That's when the Huskies, the defending national champions, go down to open their 92 season against the Arizona State Sun Devils and new head coach Bruce Snyder who moves down from California. Yes, there will be a lot of individual honors and team honors for the Huskies in 1992, but more importantly, this team as a whole has a chance to do something that no other Pac-8 or Pac-10 team has ever done. January 1st, 1991, the Huskies met the Hawkeyes in Pasadena. The James Gang, led by Rose Bowl MVP Mark Brunell, ran past and pummeled their way to a 39-14 lead. Fast forward 365 days and 11 straight wins and find the Huskies in the 92 Rose Bowl, in the hunt for a national title. Gary Moeller's Michigan Wolverines stand in their path, but not for long. The dogs dominate Michigan as Billy Joe Hobart, Mario Bailey, and Steve Entman star in the finale to the first undefeated untied season in Husky history and claim the first ever national championship at Washington. Rewind 68 years to 1924. The Washington Huskies, coached by Enoch Bagshaw, ties Navy 14-14. It's the second year the game is played at the newly constructed Rose Bowl. Since 1923, back-to-back -back Rose Bowl victories have occurred only eight times, all of those by West Coast teams. Three straight? Eh, it's never happened. The 1992 James Gang is ready to ride into Rose Bowl history. A three-peat in Pasadena. Picture day has passed, fall practice is about to end. The first step toward Pasadena will be taken in Tempe, Arizona next weekend. Time to talk to the coaches and players about last season's successes and this year's expectations. One thing that last year's team did besides uh, play well week in and week out, you know, they came to practice every day. They worked hard and uh, they stayed healthy. <clears throat> and that's the thing that, you know, you know, we've got to get through fall camp and we've got to get through the season. Uh, week in and week out without uh, a lot of major injuries, uh, serious injuries. And uh, I, think, uh, I think that uh, the key issue probably is still uh, is uh, just a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, come to work, work hard to get better. You, uh, you carry a, a great emotional uh, uh, surge from such a, such a high point as last year. Uh, the players carried in the spring practice. Uh, I fully expect us to gain a lot of benefit from it. Uh, but the other thing that you carry as a coach is you carry the constant fear of taking a step backwards. And so I, I think it's really important that you work from the standpoint of I don't want to ever want to lose this edge. 
that's definitely an incentive. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a goal, but the main focus of, of this year is, is Arizona State right now. Um, we had a model last year that, that I kind of like to, to stress upon as, as each game being a national championship game, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same thing for me again. Um, this, our first uh, opponent is Arizona State, and that's national championship game number one. So we're going to go out there and, and hopefully, um, and, and not hopefully, but we will go out there and do the things necessary to win and put it together for, for the, the next uh, 10, 10 games. I don't think the team's concerned about doing it three in a row. I think the team's concerned about what we're doing this year. I know I don't care what we did last year. That was last year's team. This year's a whole different story. We still got to go out and perform, like I said. Uh, you know, 20 years down the road, then yeah, we might look back and say, wow, it's kind of great, you know, doing three in a row. But I don't think every, anybody really cares what we did last year. We just want to do what we can do this year and worry about it 10 years down, down the road. Well, I think just going through, uh, you know, back to the films of last year and looking back, and last year people say, you know, they call it the perfect season, 12 and 0, but it, you know, but it wasn't perfect. You know, I made mistakes, you know, and I'm gonna go back to the films and you know learn from those mistakes. And before we play a certain opponent, I'll go back and watch last year's game and say, oh, I, you know, I messed up here, I messed up here. I gotta fix those things, and and that's just part of being a better linebacker. And I look forward to you know hopefully being a better player this year. That's a goal every every year I come in. I don't want to be the same as I was the year before. I'm gonna be a lot better. You see it in the weight room, even before uh, we even came back to start lifting weights and uh, going out on the field, guys are in there <laughs> two and three, four hours. Uh, people were out there running as hot as I don't know what, and people were still running sprints and had a gang of water out there just so if they did get dehydrated, they were drinking fluid and stuff. So guys are, we really want it. You know, the quarterbacks are uh, getting on our case, not coming out, throwing the ball and catching the ball. So we got a lot of team chemistry. I think we're going to be all right this year. Last year was very unique in that but I, I mentioned it earlier that every guy was so accountable. I mean, it was, it was a, we had an incredible amount of teamwork. And uh, I had never seen it before in this program. I mean, guys were... You know, if one guy had a bad practice or maybe someone had a bad game, the other guy, his neighbor, would just pick him up and say, hey, let's go, let's get it going. And that's what I learned, and I, I really didn't think that it was, you know, as important as it should be, you know, years back. But last year, I, I just learned how important it is to just keep guys going, encouraging guys, and uh, it's just, that is what makes a team, to me, that's what I see is, is what keeps a team going is, is guys helping each other out. I mean, sure, you don't have to be best friends or, or buddies with every guy, but when you're on a team, um, you got to be there for the next guy, and, and he's going to be there for you. It's like you're making a sandwich, sort of. You, you, the first time you started, like last year, for example, we would use, we would have a lot of ham, a lot of turkey and stuff on the sandwich. Now we have a lot of smaller guys. We don't have guys, we don't have too many guys as big as Sue Pelly Mala Mala. As, 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 as strong as Ed Cunningham. We don't have those guys as, as fast and big as Aaron Pierce on a, as a tight end. We have guys that are smaller, but they're still great athletes, and they still can go out there and play. We don't have Steve Edmonds anymore. We have DeMarco Flores. He's two different type of athletes. Steve was a big, powerful, finesse type of guy. DeMarco's a guy who, would, who, who has a incredible speed and will beat you in a bl if you blink. So it's, it's a different, you're making a different sandwich all over again, but you're still, hopefully, it'll taste as good as you made the first one. You like that? I'm hungry, so. <laughs> I'm hungry. I just got <laughs> was letting you guys know sandwich. Right? <laughs> and you may be voting for that man someday. A politician who likes sandwiches, to say the least. <laughs> Lincoln Kennedy, also All-American candidate as an offensive tackle. And don't forget, we'll have the broadcast of the Huskies against Arizona State. Chuck and I will be calling that game for you. You'll see it here on Prime Sports Northwest. That beginning... Sunday at 8 o'clock on the 6th of September. Yeah, it's going to be fun to be involved again. We heard the players talk about, uh, in somewhat vague terms, thinking about last year and projecting it to this year. I remember one of the neat things about last year was they just played them one game at a time. They learned their lessons from the year before. Right. Now, last year's season, obviously, different lessons were learned, and we'll mm -hmm. see if they can apply those to this year and, and come out 12-0 again. Most forgiving factor for this team has to be the fact that they have seven home games. And uh, they do open a conference play down there at Arizona State, but I think that's the time to, to play.
play them right now before Bruce Snyder gets that program going. Well, it's, it's as you said, seven home games is always nice. They've got some great home games, too. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. The only uh, four road games they have are the two Arizonas, Oregon, and Washington State. You know, not really top-tier teams, uh, at least mm -hmm. at this point, in the Pac-10. And then you throw it in Nebraska at home. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got SC, Cal, Stanford, Stanford. all coming in here. Right. It's a great home schedule, not just for the players, but for the yeah. fans as well but for the fans as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a great year. All right, we got lots more coming up on this one-hour edition, as it will be every month of Husky Profile. When we come back, success on the field adds up in a lot of places. We'll take a look at the multiplication tables for number one. And number six multiplies his impact at the university through the mentor program. Come on. Let's go where the treats are terrific. Dairy Queen. Nowhere else will you find such a treasure of pleasure. A lavish spectacular of exciting, inviting, cool and creamy smooth treats. So fun-loving and delicious, the only word for it is wonderful. Frozen yogurt or soft serve. Plain or fancy, day or night, bite after bite. We treat you right. Dairy Queen. Prime Sports Northwest. From professional championships to hometown meets. From the court to the coaches. From the games to the people who play them. We cover your teams and your sports from every angle. In prime time and all the time, for nearly 2 million households, Prime Sports Northwest is the winner coming home. Senator? Yeah, Jack, come on in. You wanted to see me? What happened here? Senator. Laura? Originally, when this cable bill was drafted, our intent was to regulate rates. That's right. Now, the way I'm reading it, it's going to raise rates. Only a few dollars a month. Yeah, Jack, a few dollars a month. Could be as much as $3 billion a year if you count all cable customers. Well, you know what happens. The special interest groups get involved. Before you know it. One of the reasons is the major broadcast networks want to now start charging cable users extra to watch their programs. Only cable users? Everyone else will still get these programs for nothing? That's the way it'll turn out. And I take it nobody's asked the cable users how they feel about this? Well, no. Welcome back to Husky Profile. I'm Chuck Nelson along with Don Poyer. As you can see behind me, football season is once again upon us, and one thing that means is cliché season is also upon us. Play them one game at a time. You can't look too far ahead. Well, what happens after you've done all that, after you've played them one game at a time, and you've won them all? Nobody says you can't take a look back. The Dogs kicked off their quest for a second consecutive Rose Bowl in Palo Alto against the Cardinals. The California sun may have been bright, but the spring scrimmage loss of Rose Bowl MVP Mark Brunel at quarterback cast a long shadow over Don James' hopes. Would this new quarterback, making his first start, be able to take his team all the way? The answer wasn't long in coming. Billy Joe Hobart connected on two TDs that day and led the Dogs to their first win of the season, passing for 244 of the Huskies' total 415 yards. While the defense, led by Dave Hoffman's eight tackles, offered up its own statement by holding Stanford to just one touchdown and only 28 yards on the ground. When Billy Joe connected with Mario Bailey over Von Bryant with just seconds left in the first half, it was all over but the shout. The Huskies and their new quarterback would not only win, they were a conference win closer to that second Rose Bowl. The next test for the would-be Pac-10 champs was in Nebraska against the 8th-ranked Cornhuskers. But the test seemed to be more of the Huskies' composure as flags nullified seemingly play after play. The Dogs managed to post just one touchdown and trailed at the half despite dominating the game's statistics, traveling 100 more yards than Nebraska. The third period seemed to promise only more disappointment. Every time things seemed to come together, yellow flags took them apart. 
The test of team composure reached all the way to the top. Washington Trail, 21-9, heading toward the fourth period. But with just seconds left in the third, the Dogs pulled it all together one more time, and this time it stayed that way. The Huskies scored four unanswered touchdowns capped off by an 81-yard Jay Berry scamper to shock Nebraska with a 36-21 drum. When the Huskies took the field for their home opener against Kansas State, they scored on six of their first seven possessions and held the Wildcats to minus 17 yards on the ground. In posting a 56-3 win, it was clear that these dogs were... Arizona was the next victim of the purple juggernaut, and when Billy Joe Hobart went down in the third period, Mark Brunel came on to show he still knew how to play the game. The dogs balled the Wildcats 54 to nothing. Former UW offensive coordinator Gary Pinkle brought his Toledo Rockets to Seattle for the Huskies' last non-conference game. No doubt he had a more cordial greeting at the James House that night. The second half of the season started in Strawberry Canyon, where the now third-ranked Huskies had a brawl with eight-ranked Cal. After Jay Berry's nine-yard TD run gave the Dogs a first-half 17-10 lead, Lindsey Chapman's 68-yard score tied the game, heading into the fourth period. As if to reinforce just how tight this game was, Bean O'Brien took off on his own 65-yard tear to take back the lead. With time running out, Cal went for the end zone. Offsetting penalties gave them one more shot. For the second time that season, the dog had beat a top 10 opponent on the road. Back home, Mario Bailey caught his way into the record book against the Ducks. And against the Sun Devils, the Huskies scored 14 points before ASU could run their second play. From 31 to nothing at the half, it was 44 to 16 when the smoke cleared. The dogs then went to the LA Coliseum to record their first win there since 1980. Bino Bryant ran for a personal best 158 yards, and the defense recorded 14 tackles for loss, including five sacks. It was also the second year in a row that the Huskies had denied the Trojans the end zone. The rain in Corvallis the next week brought out the Roses. Mario Bailey chalked up another record as the Dogs clinched their second straight Rose Bowl. Any other bowl would not have smelled as weak. Back home the next week, the bouquets were all laid out, but there was one more piece of business to complete. The Cougars stood between the Dogs and their first perfect season since 1915. The way the Huskies played, you'd have thought they had a bone to pick. Wazoo head coach Mike Price's vote for Miami as national champion might have had something to do with it. It seemed like when the offense wasn't scoring, the defense was. The 56-21 final score gave Washington its third straight Apple Cup victory and a perfect 11-0 season. And from the opening kickoff, it seemed the Rose Bowl should convince anyone who'd witnessed it that the Washington Huskies had earned and deserved at least a share of the 1991 National Championship. Cheers. Carol and I, she, she jumps up and started calling family and friends, and I, I'm emotional now, but it's, it's, it's so difficult to express, uh, you know, the feeling that I have for these kids. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm an emotional person, but uh, uh, see, Ed, these guys, what they've gone through, and, and for them not to get a piece of this uh, would, have been, uh, would have been a tragedy. Those highlights are awfully fun to watch, but hindsight makes it seem almost inevitable that they would go 11-0. Uh, but what is truly impressive is that they did win them one game at a time. Hmm. And it may have been 18 years or another 18 where we see Don James that emotional <laughs> again. That's an incredible sight, really incredible sight. It's fun to look back, isn't it? Well, we all know, and it is well documented, the success of this Husky football team back in 1991. But the high expectations for the 92 season has spawned some incredible demands and support off the field as well as Husky mania is at an all-time high. Go ahead, go ahead. 
With two Rose Bowl wins and a national championship in the past two years, suddenly everyone is a Husky fan. Hello, Husky Ticket Office, man, up okay. here. Nowhere is the rush greater felt than at the Husky Ticket Office, where season tickets are all gone. In past years, with a donation, the Tai Club was a safe bet to secure your season tickets. Not this year. Season tickets this year uh, are impossible to come by. We actually had a lottery for uh, for the last several tickets that were available down there in the horseshoe of the end zone. But the Tai program, when we opened up the new deck in '87, uh, was fully sold uh, the year or two after that because so many new people came in and didn't get exactly what they wanted. There were some openings, but now we're back to the point where uh, you can't even get a tie seat anymore. We're probably up around 66,000 right now, and that's all we can sell because when you take uh, student seats, you take uh, the away game or the visiting team seats and things of that sort, uh, that's the most we can sell, and they're all sold. Besides tickets, interest in the Huskies for promotional purposes has been as great as ever. Cindy Holt is the Director of Marketing and Promotions for the Husky Athletic Department. She says the biggest change for her group has been the proliferation of out-of-town requests. More of the, the increase in requests have come from outside of the Seattle and actually Washington area. Um, I've gotten calls from pr practically every state in the country requesting promotional type material you know posters and schedule cards and trading cards and um, autographs and photographs and um, that sort of thing um, appearances have always been pretty strong here in our local Seattle area so the biggest uh, increase uh, has been in the exposure across the country you know just just the sheer requests for um, promotional material has been incredible coming up with a theme for football season is a yearly task at Cindy's office Last year, it was bad to the bone. This year's theme will make Husky opponents colorblind. The, the theme this year is real dogs wear purple. We want everybody to be wearing their purple in the stand. Cash registers at stores selling Husky apparel and souvenirs also have experienced an increased workload. Matt Ulrich, owner of the Tequila Club, a U District retailer, hopes the good fortunes of the team continue, not only as a loyal Husky fan, but for his business, too. Well, our business is up about 40% the last two years over previous years, you know, and those are due to the, to the bowl uh, wins, two Rose Bowl wins and a national championship. Yeah, so it's... You attribute sales to, you know, as a team goes, so goes the sales of merchandise. It's amazing how...